reporting live from heaven. You know, a lot of times you feel like this dark line and you don't want to do something knowing it's going to empower you, knowing the credits of heaven are going to roll out, the red carpet of majesty is going to come out and you're going to get the promotion, you're going to get the degree, you're going to get the, the handshake, you're going to be exalted, right? But there's something preventing and you know it's like a hidden backward thought against someone, something that's trying to give you the belief system to not move forward and progress. I believe it's the secret things in life that we don't see that govern the universe. And it is that govern your wealth, that govern the laws and principles of money, that govern the laws and principles of what we consider success. And you got to ask in life, what is your consideration of a thing? Or what are your thoughts about a thing? These are great questions to ask. Because if you're like, what do you think about God? Well, I don't, you know, he's just blah, blah, blah. Well, if that's your outlook on God, and God is the entirety of the existence of this life that we're upon, well, you're going to have some problems. So you got to sit back. You have to learn to backtrace in your mind to all the events that have ever occurred. Because if there's a knot tied in your memory that you got backlash on, that you got demonic thinking towards, you feel hatred towards somebody, something irritated you, you got to go to that Untie it by focusing on it and get the solution. Solve it. Solve it. You got to be a problem solver in life. When the Bible talks about waiting on God, we really got that thing twisted. We don't know what waiting on God means. We, and I'm talking to myself. We don't really truly know what that means. You wait for him to move, but he gives you power and authority where you're at to take over, to dominate, to deal with situations, to subdue evil, to deal with people and nasty attitudes. That person that's cheating on their wife, to deal with that situation in your vicinity, okay? So you don't wait. You do. You deal with it. And I'm learning in my mind, there is a freedom just to talk. When you can sit down and just have a casual conversation, there's freedom in that. When you ain't got to think, is this going to be, is this going to sound right? Is this going to be good? Is this going to do right? Maybe I shouldn't say this because I probably shouldn't say that because if I say that, this is going to happen. If I do that, that may not be the Bible. That might be the word. That might be religious. That might not like that. Blah, 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 blah. Right? So when you can just openly, freely express and know the Holy Spirit in your devotion is going to catch that. And then the catalyst, the voice, the oracle is going to express that. So you're going to get the, you're going to get the realization in, in, in your mind. Why you're, see, why I'm talking, I get realization that I don't get when I just pray in the Spirit, when I seek the face of God, when I read my Bible. But when I come with the full, with the forefront focus to just talk, not even know what I'm going to say, just talk about God, talk about life, talk about what I'm learning. I start feeling this energy pumping me up that I don't feel, any, that I don't feel in this way, in this fashion, anywhere else. So sometimes it's more about faith. And faith, I'm learning more about faith. Faith is not... Honestly, faith isn't having anything figured out at all. It's actually the opposite. And it's giving me more rest in my life, more peace in my spiritual life. It's giving me more of God's presence by because before I had to have everything figured out. But the less and less I have to have anything figured out, even the intense things I go through, and I just just silent, don't even don't even have to figure it out. That's faith. Just resting and being assured that God's got your back and he's making it work out for a reason. And a lot of times that reason has nothing to do with a circumstance. We always think, well, God's working out for greater good. And the only thing we think about is getting more money. God's gonna use this to give me more money. God's gonna use me this to get a new car. God's gonna use, and yeah, that's okay, but that's all we human beings think about. We don't think about the divine matrix, the supernatural, the infinite, that life is so much bigger. And so we always think, yeah, the Bible says God's going to work out everything for the greater good. So I'm going to get more money. And we only think about physical things. But a lot of times God working out something for a greater good, you might have suffered and you have a revelation. You have knowledge. You have a spiritual key, spiritual insight that when you speak it, 7,000 people are going to receive it and they're going to get touched by the hand of God. Now, that's better than any car you could get, is it? Maybe not to you. Maybe you esteem physical wealth higher than the spiritual 
applications and the wisdom and the revelation. See, the wealth of God, the wealth to God has nothing to do with, oh, you got a car. Wealth to God is wisdom. Wealth to God is being free. Wealth to God is because you can have all this.